Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Pakistan-occupied Kashmir belongs to India, which expects to gain physical control over the region one day. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar said on Tuesday against the backdrop of heightened tensions with Pakistan on the Kashmir issue. Terrorism is the only issue India is willing to discuss with Pakistan and the world community understands that the changes made in Jammu and Kashmir are an internal matter and aimed at tackling issues such as cross-border terrorism, Jay Shankar said, addressing his first news conference since assuming office to mark the first 100 days of the National Democratic Alliance's second term in government. He also virtually ruled out meetings between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Pakistani counterpart Imran Khan on the sidelines of the upcoming UN General Assembly in New York. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the unfinished POK agenda. Joining me on the program today are Major General Aswini Shivach, retired strategic affairs expert, Alok Bansal, Director, India Foundation, and Shiv Shankar Mukherjee, former ambassador. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, I'd like to begin the program with you. Your thoughts on what the Foreign Minister said about uh, POK and about how it should be an integral part of India. Well, I think what he was doing was uh, significant, not because of what he stated, but because of the timing of what he stated. The fact that Pakistan occupied Kashmir is an integral part of India has been our consistent policy ever since 1947. Uh, I mean, look, the legality of the transfer of the territory of Jammu and Kashmir through the instrument of accession to India is unquestionable. Uh, the fact that there is a resolution, as far as the, domin the, the, the nation of India is concerned, a unanimous resolution of the Indian parliament talks about the whole of Jammu and Kashmir being an integral part of India. Therefore, the fact that uh, the, that part of Jammu and Kashmir, which was a clearly defined area, uh, which, is, which has been occupied by Pakistan and remains in their physical possession till date, is actually an integral part of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and therefore part of the Union of India is, has always been our policy. Uh, so that is nothing new. What is new, what is well uh, significant, is that he's making the statement now, after August 5, when um, Article 370 was, everybody calls it being abrogated, but it has not been abrogated, it has been modified. 370 still exists, but in a completely different way. Uh, when when uh, the, when there has been an, uh, a complete change in the status within India of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and the international repercussions and ramifications, we have made it abundantly clear to the rest of the world that this is an internal matter of India. And that, of course, has sent Pakistan into multiple fits uh, and, and they are embarked on uh, a huge propaganda exercise within their own country as well as outside to uh, you know, to, to, to present uh, the recent action of the Indian government in as bad a light as they can, uh, which is why I think the very clear and uh, unambiguous statement on Pakistan-occupied Kashmir by our foreign minister assumes significance at this point of time. So uh, that, that really is to me the significance of the statement. Uh, right. Okay. General? Uh, uh, yes. Hello, Bansal. No, I just wanted to say that uh, this is probably the very first time that India's external affairs minister has a, made a statement like this. And if you go through the press conference, what he made very categorically was that it's always been our part. Now we will establish our physical control, uh, our physical jurisdiction over it. Now that is a very, very significant statement. That means that we are hoping and we, he says we will have one day our physical jurisdiction. That means uh, it's an emphatic statement saying that we hope to gain it for uh, very soon at some stage. We, the India plans or strives to get it under our control. And which is very important because during Shimla agreement and consequently for a number of decades, the government of India behaved in a manner as if line of control was de facto the international border thereby we had actually for for some time we hardly made any significant movement towards it 
although in 71 war we had captured almost 804 square kilometers of territory of Gilgit Baltistan in Turtuk sector. So uh, post 71 no significant attempts were made. Now what this particular statement coming after what Prime Minister had said from the ramparts of the Red Fort uh, earlier about POK uh, shows that the current government is committed uh, to fulfilling the parliamentary resolutions which were passed from time to time about POK. Absolutely. You know, talking about POK and talking about the region itself, General, I'd like to draw your attention because you've been there, you've seen things from close quarters. What are the challenges for India in that particular region? Uh, Frank, first of all, we have to understand it. Uh, why was that India was not trying to exert itself on POK? You know, we were slightly defensive as far as our own Kashmir was concerned. And we were always trying to justify that. And therefore, uh, you know, our uh, uh, thinking process had never gone on Pakistan occupied Kashmir. After we have integrated Jammu and Kashmir to the main state and now after modification of leak, uh, abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. Now that has become part of India. So that there is no doubt left in mind of anyone. Now the next step is that the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which was supposed to be part of the Jammu and Kashmir, which is an integral part of India, must also be taken back. So as far as Minister of External Affairs very categorically said that we have intent to take it and one day we will have a jurisdiction. So, he is only given an intent and to, to my, it's a political statement. I am sure in time to come, we will materialize it by uh, also our uh, military intent. So, there is no denying the fact. Now, the point which you asked is, what are the challenges uh, which are there? You know, there are challenges are numerous. It is not that easy. You know, the point is, as far as, far as Pakistan occupied Kashmir is concerned is uh, that uh, Pakistan has changed the demographic it, of uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir over a period of time. It has settled down a lot of ex-servicemen, Punjabis and Pathans. So the original color of POK has changed. So have they done in Gilgit Baltistan. My point is Gilgit Baltistan is far easier because Gilgit Baltistan is a Shia community which is extension of our Kargil Batalik area. So that is far easier than the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. But whether it is Aksaichen, whether it is Gilgit Baltistan, whether it is Saksam Valley which has been uh, illegally given by Pakistan, uh, by Pakistan to China, that becomes a part of Pakistan occupied Kashmir and our intent is that they must be brought back as and when the time will come right. So therefore this is the thing. But as on today he mentioned this statement has got lot of significance. The timing which the ambassador was telling I fully agree because earlier it was not having meaning. Now instead of defensive we are proactive. Today you have changed the narrative. Till now you were defensive about on Jammu and Kashmir. You have changed the narrative. Now you put both Pakistan to some extent even China on backward. Because right. the point when we talk about Gilgit Baltistan also, now there is an element of doubt coming in China mind because China Pakistan economic corridor passes through it. And it is to start now having a doubt. And this is a flagship project for China. So therefore, though India is not Telling in so uncertain terms, it is a fact that Gilgit Baltistan will have a serious implication for China's interest. So, therefore, as on today, to me, look like that we have won the round number one. We must handle our situation well, and in time to come, we must have an intent to take back, especially Pakistan occupied and Gilgit Baltistan, which is rightfully the part of Jammu and Kashmir, which is part of India. Okay, all right. Yes, Captain Balso. I just wanted to say there is a problem of nomenclatures. In fact, even Prime Minister's statement had a flaw when he had spoken from it. Please understand, it's not Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. Gilgit Baltistan is an integral part of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has divided Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir into two parts. One which they call it Gilgit Baltistan, one which they call AJK or Azad Jammu and Kashmir. We call it Mirpur Muzaffarabad. So this part must be understood that Gilgit Baltistan is not very separate from Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir. It's actually a part of it. In fact, we need to understand that the territory which they call AJK is less than 15% of the territory under Pakistani occupation. 
though it has majority of the population around 70% of the population more than 85% of the territory occupied by Pakistan is in Gilgit Baltistan and it is this part where there is a huge turbulence against Pakistani occupation people have been protesting against Pakistan's occupation for decades in fact uh, as generals rightly said CPEC passes through it and if you actually see the foreign and direct investment into Pakistan the Chinese have ex become extremely wary of investing in this part as a result under CPEC no project has come up in Gilgit Baltistan except for except expansion of the road which is actually critical because the road connectivity is through that particular part otherwise not there and Gilgit Baltistan also has a very very rich pre-Islamic heritage and as a result in Geneva where UNHRC was going on uh, in fact it's going on as of now also uh, we have people from Gilgit Baltistan who have been protesting there people like Senge Sering and earlier you had uh, other like Manzoor Parwana and all they have been protesting against Pakistan's occupation the people here have been asking for Kargil's Kardu bus service to be started because you have divided families in this particular track you have culturally similar population living on both sides but Pakistan which is extremely scared that the free winds flowing from Kargil and Leh will create problems because the people in this particular part have been living virtually as a colony because till 2009 Gilgit Baltistan had no local self-government there was actually it was being treated like a colony and even today when it has a governor and a chief minister they are incapable or they are not authorized to take any significant decisions vis-a-vis -vis Gilgit Baltistan so this discontent we need to harness and I think once the external affairs minister has said hopefully we'll see something because please remember till recently every Pakistan day celebration Hurriyat leaders were invited by embassy our embassy in Islamabad has never ever contacted leave aside invited the nationalist leaders from Gilgit Baltistan or other parts of uh, POJK that is Mirpur Muzaffarabad hopefully after this we would start showing at least our moral support to those people who are fighting against Pakistani occupation in this significant part because this is undoubtedly the most strategically important part of Jammu and Kashmir when okay. we say Jammu and Kashmir is strategically located it is not the Kashmir Valley it is Gilgit Baltistan which is the most important part of Jammu and Kashmir okay we need to be more proactive is what you're suggesting as far as our policies are concerned ambassador would you agree with that do you see us changing our policy towards Pakistan and you know actually doing what uh, the captain has just suggested well i wouldn't go so far i mean it, it's for time it's, it's it's for the future to to unfold uh, whether the statement of the foreign secretary uh, foreign minister our external affairs minister can be taken to uh, signal or indicate a kind of you know policy uh, of of actually putting on the ground action to start at least activate or start a process of uh, a kind of muscular diplomacy leading perhaps to even um, armed intervention to, to reintegrate Pakistan occupied Kashmir the totality as Alok pointed out uh, is at the present moment in my opinion uh, a little overstretched I personally think it, it simply indicates at the present moment a resolve on the Indian side to very actively and strongly uh, rebut Pakistani criticism on the international stage to buttress our position that uh, the recent uh, actions taken by the Indian government vis-a-vis -vis Kashmir, uh, vis-a-vis -vis Jammu and Kashmir are legally uh, correct, are legally, uh, I mean they are legitimate and they are an internal matter of India and uh, the way the foreign, min the external affairs minister has, has um, enunciated his uh, you know the the, uh, the fact that the only remaining question really is uh, the return of uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir to India because it is legitimately a part of Jammu and Kashmir which legally uh, uh, acceded to India and is an integral part of India I think it it uh, reflects a kind of uh, to me it reflects the 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 desire to be the the intention to be proactive and and strong uh, in terms of our uh, assertion of our sovereignty 
in, in no uncertain terms on the international stage as far as our foreign policy is concerned. Whether this can be extrapolated actually further for real, uh, you know, for, for, you know, for action on the ground to, uh, to actually start a process and it's, this is not going to be an easy process. Uh, it, it's not just a question of walking in and, and you know, taking back territory that has been forcibly occupied uh, by an enemy. Uh, well, that's, that's really for the future to, to, you know, to see. The present government prides itself on being strong uh, and, and uh, you know, very, very assertive in terms of uh, uh, national sovereignty, in terms of India's territorial sovereignty, in terms of, uh, you know, giving back to the enemy uh, strongly when the enemy exports terrorism towards us, talking of our Western neighbor and so on. Uh, but that, that, that I think, again, I go back to my earlier statement about the timing. The, the present time and the action that has unfolded since I, August 5 internally within India and its international ramifications probably are more responsible uh, for this kind of uh, strong statement rather than I think a thought out policy, a long term policy uh, ending with uh, the reintegration of the lost property uh, of India, which, has, which, which, which we legitimately claim as our own. Right, right. Yes, Alokman sir. I just wanted to say that uh, I am not advocating that there should be a military action or nor have I suggested that India is going for a military action. But the discontent which is there in POJK which has not yet been harnessed. Just to give you an example, on Sunday night and early hours of Monday, 18 activists were rounded up in Muzaffarabad in a pre-dawn sweep by Pakistan because they had been protesting against Pakistani occupation. Now, that shows a level of discontent. And what is the fact is that the day government of India removed certain subsections of Article 370 and made 35A infructuous, uh, that particular day in Islamabad, there were at least 18 banners which were hung talking of Akhand Bharat. Now, that shows the discontent that's been brewing inside Pakistan by various people. As far as Gilgit Baltistan is concerned, we were aware that there has been a huge problem. Mirpur, Muzaffarabad, we have not been talking. What I was suggesting was that till now, there has been no effort made by us to harness the discontent, to at least give them emotional or moral support to the people who were fighting the Pakistani occupation in this part. Although we had every constitutional, moral and legal right to claim this territory. This has been our integral part. The United Nations also accepted that Pakistan was the aggressor. And according to even UN resolution, Pakistan was to get its soldiers vacated from this particular part, which it has not done from that point, point time till date. So, despite being that, we have not done so and I think this statement of external affairs minister shows an intent whereby probably government of India would now start engaging and providing moral support to those outfits, those individuals who are contesting Pakistan's occupation on this territory and who have been protesting in the past. Okay. As far as the sectarian con uh, issue is concerned, we need to understand this because since general brought it out. Gilgit Baltistan is actually a sectarianly is a very complex place. It's a Shia majority region, which is actually when we say simply, because Shias are also not a monolith. The people who we call Shias are actually Ithna Isharia or the Twelver Shias, which is Iran's official religion. Now in Gilgit Baltistan, you have four sects of Islam: Sunnis, that is Shias, which is Twelver Shias. Then you have Smilies, who are the followers of Aga Khan, and then you have the Noor Bakshis, who are also there in some numbers on our side in Partapur, Bordan, Turtuk, etc. Now, what has happened is that the fundamentalism which has grown in Pakistan has brought in some sort of a Deobandi Sunni onslaught into these sectarian minorities. And there has been a reaction. And that, that is very clearly manifest in the turbulence that we see in Gilgit Baltistan because sectarian minorities feel that Pakistan is trying to impose their version of Islam onto them. And Gilgit Baltistan Order 2018 is even more problematic because Council of Islamic Ideology, which exists in Pakistan, has now been given a jurisdiction on Gilgit Baltistan. Mm. So, clerics sitting in Pakistan will pontificate and decide which version of Islam is correct or when there are problems related to issues concerning Islam. And that's why there is a huge, huge turbulence because when this order came, GB 2018, 
which de facto makes Gilgit Baltistan a province of Pakistan without saying so mm. because Income Tax Act, all those acts have been actually implemented now in Gilgit Baltistan and taxes being extracted. There are uh, huge turbulence because people feel that this is Pakistan's attempt at gulping this strategically important area. And please remember, right from 74, 1974, state subject order was removed in this particular area. Right. Whereby mm. outsiders can go settle and buy property and become citizens of this country. Sure. And as a result, we find that from 98 to 2011, the population in Gilgit Baltistan rose by 63%. Sure. In fact, the bordering district, which is Daimar district, the population doubled in 13 years. Mm. Now, this sort of an inordinate increase clearly indicates that there is actually an attempt by Pakistan to push in external elements into this particular region. Uh, absolutely. And they are being settled there with state connivance. Talking and about, that is actually changing the demography. Talking about pushing external elements, there is uh, there, there are a couple of reports that spoke about how dormant routes have now been used by the Pakistani army to infiltrate about 60 uh, terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir and they have used routes in the high reaches of North Kashmir, Poonch and Rajori of Jammu region. So basically Pakistan is trying all it can to try and upset the apple cart in Jammu and Kashmir general. Absolutely correct. Uh, Frank, the point today is that the narrative which was set by Pakistan has completely failed. No, they were thinking that after they uh, Article 370 uh, and 35 was abrogated, there will be agitation from the people. People will come in, you know, in on the street, and they will be a uh, lot of, uh, you know, uh, dharnas. That has failed completely. Nothing has happened. The normalcy is returning, and that is not to the liking of Pakistan. So now Pakistan is trying its best to create and rumors there, information war, hybrid warfare means making use of all instrument which is available to them to create that ki some sort of agitation take. Let the people come on the road. Let the firing take place. Let some people get killed. That's what is the liking of Pakistan. And that has not happened because the situation which has been handled very maturely by Indian forces so far is a force to reckon with. But now also Pakistan is trying its best to uh, create problem by doing what first of all on line of control it has activated it is now firing with motors as well as artillery on our in civilian area including punch rajori because punch rajori uh, the um, muslim have backed abrogation of 370 and 35a they have now trying to get these terrorists infiltrated in india there are about 400 terrorists which are sitting on launch pad now, we have seen a uh, bat action also which was failed, where Pakistani has to use a white flag to take the dead body of two soldiers. So, the point is Pakistan will try its best to create some problem in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and try to show before the UNGA that the situation in Kashmir is alarming. There are human rights violations which are taking place and therefore there is a need uh, of internationalizing this issue and also trying to bring out that United Nations must take control of this because it is a nuclear flashpoint. But so far that agenda has failed because we have managed the situation so well that the normalcy has by and large returned uh, out of uh, complete 200 uh, plus uh, districts that uh, leaving aside 10 uh, rest everywhere everything has happened uh, normally time will take schools have opened though the children are not going i'm sure things will come what has not happened is two things one is the internet and one is mobile which is not functional the reason is very obvious because that was misused by the terrorists to get the information and direction from their master sitting in pakistan occupied kashmir now by cutting this the satellites nowadays not work they were totally dependent on a mobile that you have already uh, cut it so today the terrorists which are inside the kashmir valley have become headless right. they are directionless so they so therefore they were not able to operate and hence you find in last 40 days plus you have no bullet which has been fired by by uh, indian armed forces the reason is because the today the terrorists are only targeting the civilians and those poor civilians who are trying to open their shops or those who are trying to sell their apple. So the point which is today is that Pakistan narrative is completely failed. Sure. Pakistan will try its best. We must understand that the hybrid war is the one which they will do. Rumors, misinformation and uh, you can say that agitation which he has failed so far and which is trying its best to project to the world that there is a 
ह्यूमन राइट वायलेशन विच इज टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन ग्राउंड द फैक्ट इज things are limping to normal see it will take time right. it will take time but time is not far off things will better but we have to be guard because you cannot underestimate your enemy and especially enemy like pakistan which sure. will try its best to create problem in in jammu and kashmir okay all right quick closing comments from all my guests i've got limited time left on the program ambassador starting first with you with the best way forward talking about the unga what can we expect there Well, uh, the UNGA, uh, of course, the, w- what will happen there is entirely predictable. In an uncertain world, that stands with a reasonable degree of certainty. There will be a, a huge amount of raving and ranting uh, from the Pakistani Prime Minister. His almost his entire speech will dwell on uh, Indian perfidy uh, on human rights and everything that he can think of to throw at India in his speech. I think uh, our prime minister will definitely rebut most of it but going by uh, our previous performances in UNGA and and you know our current uh, foreign policy imperatives I don't think he will uh, give Pakistan we give Pakistan's prime minister the comfort or the satisfaction of concentrating totally on Pakistan I think he will he will make uh, a statement in the UNGA which will cover important international issues uh, india is 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 trying to be a leader uh, and is being recognized as a major major uh, uh, a nation exhorting uh, action on climate change global warming counter terrorism he's called for a global uh, conference on terrorism uh, you know uh, a level playing field for international trade in developing nations right. and so on Uh, uh so he, uh, and of course he will definitely uh use the short period of time he has at the podium to rebut uh you know pakistani uh, you know die tribes against india and and underline the fact that whatever happens has happened there is is uh, india's internal affair sure. so sure. that more or less will sum it up there will be hardly anyone in the audience except indian and pakistani diplomats because the rest of them have heard it year after year after year and they're not particularly interested right uh, and so that that will be uh, the unga scene okay all right alok bansal see as ambassador said this is what is going to happen as far as unga is concerned pakistan will do that i think we will ignore it we'll rebut it to some extent the international community by and large will ignore pakistan and that is what is important and i think from our point of view uh by taking the battle now to other side of line of control we have told pakistan that as far as our internal areas are concerned they are stabilized they are secure and if we i don't think so there'll be any turbulence or anything in jammu and kashmir and i think that itself would be the befitting reply to what pakistani accusations would be right. and i think now onwards maybe we will start raising issues because one of the statements of eam yesterday was very interesting mm. where he says that if there was an there was to be a human rights audit of this part of the world we'll know which which country would come the last right. and Absolutely. that is where he said that how the girls are being abducted mm. and uh, yesterday that uh, sindhi sure. girl who has been killed and all those things were brought out so the, i think now we are going to be on the offense absolutely general close the show for us with your concluding remarks uh, frank uh, before you know the other aspect which we were talking about gilgit baltistan the strategic important of gilgit baltistan is that it connects india with afghanistan it, this is a very important thing till now we were using pakistan or iran to go to afghanistan gilgit baltistan give us that leverage of directly connecting you know in future if whenever we think about it that point we have to take into consideration now my point is as far as pakistan is concerned whatever is the fault lines of pakistan we must use them whether it is baluchistan whether it is sindh or whether it is uh, jammu and kashmir the pakistan occupied kashmir where they have been mil- ill treating because their minority track record is very poor right. from 20% they have come less than 2% now the world alok was about to tell so overall what is happening is the situation of pakistan is abysmally very poor economically they are in shambles diplomatically they have been isolated we should only speak in unga about other international issues we should not become one to one with pakistan on that issue i am sure pakistan prime minister is only going to talk about uh, jammu and kashmir and what has happened there but as far as indian prime minister is concerned he will talk about the global issues right. and he will only bring out one issue as our pakistani concern is a cross border terrorism and hub of basically terrorists till 
Pakistan does not stop this terrorism. There is no question of any talk with, between India and Pakistan. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.